morning. My name is Dan Scripps, Chair of the Michigan Public Service Commission, and I call this meeting of the Commission to order on September 24th, 2021 at 10.32 a.m. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Chair Scripps. Present. Commissioner Phillips. Present. Commissioner Paratic. Present. Mr. Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Today's meeting is being held in person at the Commission's office at 7109 West Saginaw Highway in Lansing, so you're all in the right place for those who are participating in person. We're also hosting this meeting remotely using Microsoft Live Event. It is compatible with all browsers except Safari. Telephone relay service is available through the phone option. If you are participating via the live stream, you may also turn on the live captions by clicking on the closed caption or CC button in the lower right corner of the screen. As indicated in the notice for today's meeting, if we lose the remote connection, the commission will not recess, we'll continue to go forward in person. The meeting will be recorded and available for future reference on the commission's website. In addition, the commissioners can receive comment via MPSC underscore commissioners at michigan.gov. For reference, this email is also included in the Q&A feature on the live stream event on your computer and in the meeting notice. We will have an opportunity for the public to make comments as provided in the agenda. A few notes about this. Comments should be limited to one per person and can be made verbally in person or by calling in or in writing via the live stream Q&A feature. If you are participating via Teams application, you can use the Q&A feature and type your comments in the box anytime during our meeting and we will have those queued up to read. The Q&A function should be used to submit public comments directed to the commission. If you would like to make verbal comments, you must do so in person or by calling into the meeting by phone. And to minimize disruptions, attendees, attendees participating by phone will be muted until we reach the time for public comment. The first order of business today is the approval of the agenda. Mr. Phillips. Thank you, Chair. I move for the approval of the agenda for today's commission meeting. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve today's agenda. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries by unanimous vote. The agenda is approved. The next item of business on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the September 9, 2021 commission meeting. Thank you, Chair. I move for the approval of the minutes from the September 9th, 2021 commission meeting. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the minutes from the September 9, 2021 commission meeting. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The commission meeting minutes of September 9, 2021 are approved. The next item of business on the agenda is the approval of orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. And today the commission is assisted by staff attorney Anna Sterling. I recognize Ms. Sterling. Good morning. Today's consent agenda consists of five communications matters, three electric matters, and one gas matter. The proposed orders and minute actions for these matters have been thoroughly vetted by the Commission's technical and legal staff and are ready for your approval. Thank you, Ms. Sterling, and uh, congrats. I think this is the first time you've uh, taken on this role for the Commission. Uh, I move for the approval of the orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the orders and minute actions on the consent agenda. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The orders and minute actions on the consent agenda are approved. Ms. Sterling. Item 4A1 is case number U18238, which involves a matter on the Commission's own motion to consider whether to reopen and revise the Commission's rate case filing requirements for electric, natural gas, and steam utilities. The order before you invites interested persons to submit comments on specified topics no later than 5 p.m. Eastern Time on October 22nd, 2021, and reply comments no later than 5 p.m. Eastern Time on November 5th, 2021. I move for the approval of the order in case U-18238. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a motion on, we will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The order in case number U-18238 is approved. I again recognize Ms. Sterling. Item 4A2 is case number U-20222, which involves an application by DTE Electric Company for approval to reconcile its power supply costs and revenues collected pursuant to its power supply cost recovery plan for the 12-month period ended December 31st, 2019. 
The order before you approves the company's application as set forth in the order. Thank you, Ms. Sterling. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-20222. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The order in case number U-20222 is approved. I recognize Ms. Sterling. Item 4A3 is case numbers U-20633 et al, which involve a matter on the Commission's own motion directing staff to create a redline version of the Michigan Integrated Resource Planning Parameters and Integrated Resource Plan Filing Requirements for review by the Commission and stakeholders as part of Advanced Planning Phase 3 of the My Power Grid Integration of Resource Transmission and Distribution Planning Workgroup. Staff member Naomi Simpson will describe this order. Good morning, Chair Scripps and Commissioner Phillips and Commissioner Paratic. My name is Naomi Simpson, and I am the manager of the resource optimization and certification section within the commission. I am also the staff lead on the My Power Grid Advanced Planning Phase 2 initiative. Today, I will give you the feedback and an overview of 20633 et al. order before you. On October 17, 2019, the Michigan Public Service Commission launched My Power Grid in collaboration with Governor Gretchen Whitmer. My Power Grid is a customer focused, multi year stakeholder initiative intended to ensure safe, reliable, affordable, and accessible energy resources for the state's clean energy future. The initiative is designed to maximize the benefits of the transition to clean distributed energy resources for Michigan residents and businesses. My Power Grid encompasses outreach, education, and changes to the utility regulation by focusing on three core areas, customer engagement, integration of new technologies, and optimizing grid performance and investments. On October 20, 2020, the Commission opened docket U20633 and directed staff to convene a collaborative stakeholder work group of utility representatives and interested stakeholders, referred to as the Integration of Resource Distribution and Transmission Planning Work Group. Rate regulated utilities and other stakeholders participated in this work group to discuss improvements to integrated resource planning and ways to align resource planning with distribution planning efforts and transmission planning. Staff held a series of eight meetings from September to March that featured information from Michigan rate regulated utilities, stakeholders, staff, and other state agencies, national labs, and other experts throughout the country. Meetings discussed topics such as forecasting, generation diversity, transmission planning and energy markets, integrated resource plan alignment with other planning processes, and environmental justice. Staff also engaged in several in-depth meetings with the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy about environmental considerations for resource planning. Staff solicited feedback from stakeholders at the con conclusion of almost every meeting and on the draft staff report. This feedback, along with the learnings from experts and information presented during stakeholder sessions, was used to develop staff's final report that was filed in this docket on May 27, 2021. In summary, Staff's report included recommendations for regulated utilities to consider resilience within planning processes with a specific focus on vulnerable loads such as those that impact health, safety, and security of the public. Staff, for staff to continue to work with the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy to develop a list of additional environmental data requests for utilities to include in IRPs and to further consider carbon counting for market resources during phase three of the advanced planning work group. Rate regulated utilities to increase communications within the utility and with stakeholders to ensure forecasting methodologies and assumptions are aligned across all planning processes. For utilities to enhance alignment of transmission planning through increased communication between utilities and transmission owners that supports collaboration and that the alignment of planning and for all stakeholders to participate in the RTO processes. 
regulated utilities to analyze and present the value of generation diversity as part of the integrated resource plan through stochastic risk assessment of optimized plans and to pr propose this <laughs> propose um, deterministic scenarios that test resource portfolios to evaluate specific futures for staff to track statewide generation diversity as Michigan's energy future continues to transform and evolve for re regulated utilities to establish consistency, transparency and communication when creating forecasting and modeling assumptions between distribution and integrated resource planning, including resources that may provide locational benefits in distribution planning, while also providing resource benefits in integrated resource planning. And most importantly, that all planning processes are a continuous cycle and that the results from each planning process should iteratively feed into the others. The order before you details the extensive work that staff, stakeholders, and utilities through, throughout the advanced planning phase two initiative have done. This order emphasizes the importance of addressing the effects of climate change and extreme weather conditions, noting that thorough consideration of forecasting, transmission planning, generation diversity, alignment of planning processes, all assure that electricity can be delivered reliably to customers, notwithstanding the inevitable impacts that extreme weather conditions will have on the electric grid. As such, the Commission encourages stakeholders to engage in the Commission's technical conference on energy emergency preparedness, distribution reliability, and storm response. The first session will be held virtually on October 22, 2021. Information about how to participate will be made available in case number U20122 docket no later than October, October 4, 2021. Information about the second session will be available in the near future. Furthermore, the Commission accepts the recommendations in staff's report and directs the staff to create a red line version of the Michigan Integrated Resource Planning Parameters, distribute the red line version to stakeholders by December 22, 2021, and to convene an advanced planning phase three integration of resource distribution and transmission work group by providing a 30 day notice to stakeholders prior prior to the first scheduled meeting. Staff is directed to file the final draft of the Michigan Integrated Resource Planning Parameters on June 30th, 2022 in a new docket to be opened by the Commission's own motion and to file the final draft of the revised integra Integrated Resource Plan filing requirements on June 20th, 2022 in case number U15896. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Simpson, for uh, your presentation, as well as your team's continued work uh, in these dockets, as well as in the My Power Grid uh, work group. I move for the approval of the order in case numbers U-20633 at all. I second the motion. Before we vote on this matter, I also want to take a moment to thank Ms. Simpson and the many individuals and organizations who have lent their time and talents and expertise to the discussions around how to better integrate resource transmission and distribution planning. This really was an all hands on deck uh, approach as a number of our My Power Grid initiative uh, work groups are, but this one in particular included not only Ms. Simpson uh, helping to, to lead the efforts, but Roger Doherty, Jesse Harlow, Zach Heideman, Patrick Hudson, and Sarah Molkoff and a number of others. Uh, who, who contributed. We were able to bring in a number of outside organizations as well, including EPRI, Grid Lab, MISO, the Regulatory Assistance Project, and not one, not two, but three national labs, Lawrence Berkeley, the National Renewable Energy Lab, and the Pacific Northwest National Lab uh, to leverage their expertise. And of course, utilities both from Michigan and in this case around the country as well, as, whether, as well as other active stakeholders here in Michigan. We've also benefited over the last several years by our inclusion in the Task Force on Comprehensive Electricity Planning that was a joint effort of our national association, NARUC, and the National Association of State Energy Officials, or NASIO. Former Chairman Sally Talberg and Mike Byrne participated in the initial meetings, and Kathy Cole, Naomi Simpson, and I participated in the latter meetings leading up to the blueprints released in February of this year. And from the State Energy Office, Robert Jackson was also involved throughout. 
This was, as Ms. Simpson noted, a robust process, eight separate meetings from sep September to March, uh, resulting in two reports, plus a straw proposal developed in response to Governor Whitmer's announcement of the My Healthy Climate Plan, which took place a year ago this week. Uh, and that staked out a clear goal of achieving economy-wide net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 with an interim target in 2025 consistent with the Paris Climate Agreement. This served as an organizing focus for the first parts of this effort and informed the guidance we issued in February of this year on how to incorporate these goals into utility planning, particularly the additional modeling for utilities filing IRPs before we finalized the updates to the Michigan IRP planning parameters and filing requirements that is the focus of phase three of this work. But of course, and as Ms. Simpson noted, that wasn't the only topic covered. The work groups also dove into a number of others uh, and the reports in today's order also include discussion of these issues, including forecasting, transmission planning, value of generation diversity, and emissions reduction and environmental justice considerations. Looking at this holistically, I, I think this represents the very best of our stakeholder-based process that's at the heart of the My Power Grid initiative committed local stakeholders, leveraging national expertise and perspectives, and a broad cross-section of our staff that approached the task with their, cur their characteristic curiosity, diligence, and commitment that's really emblematic of the culture here at the Commission. The result, combined with the other work streams from distribution planning to the ongoing reliability work and efforts in other areas, gives us a better set of tools to ensure our regulatory framework continues to keep up with the changes taking place in the energy industry. And again, I thank the many participants for their involvement. Is there any further discussion? None here, Chair. Thank you. We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The order in case numbers U-20633 at all is approved. Ms. Sterling, back to you. Item 4A4 is case number U-20766 which involves an application by Consumers Energy Company requesting authority to reconcile its 2019 demand response program costs. The order before you approves the reconciliation and financial incentive as specified in the order for recovery in the company's next electric rate case and provides additional directives for the company's future demand response reconciliation proceedings. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-20766. Second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The order in case number U-20766 is approved. I recognize Ms. Sterling. Item 4A5 is case number U-21038 which involves an application by Consumers Energy Company seeking ex parte approval of changes to specified demand response tariffs pursuant to the October 29th, 2020 order in case numbers U-20628 et al. The order before you approves the application. Thank you. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-210. I see the order number is wrong here. I apologize. U-21038. Uh, I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by a unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21038 is approved. I recognize Ms. Sterling. Item 4B1 is case number U-21092, which involves an application by DTE Gas Company requesting ex parte approval of an amended special contract with Constellation New Energy Gas Division LLC for certain transportation and storage rights. The order before you approves the application. Thank you, Ms. Sterling. I move for the approval of the order in case number U-21092. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? We will now have a vote on the motion to approve the order. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries by unanimous vote. The order in case number U-21092 is approved. We have now reached the time reserved for members of the public to address the commission. As mentioned in the notice for today's meeting, we will take public comments in the following order. First, individuals attending in person. Next, written comments from individuals using the Microsoft Teams live stream Q&A then verbal comments from individuals submitting names in the Q&A feature and who have called into the meeting, and finally, from individuals participating only through the phone option. 
If anyone attending in person desires to address the commission, please come to the microphone at this time. All right, we will now turn to public comments through the remote options. Again, if you would like to make a comment and have access to the Teams live stream Q&A feature on your computer, please enter your name and your comment, which will then be read aloud to the commissioners. This feature is available on the right-hand side of the control bar next to the mute button. As a reminder, the Q&A feature is intended for public comments directed to the commission and not to engage with other participants to respond to their comments. After taking any comments through this feature, we will open up the phone line for those who called into the meeting and would like to address the commission verbally. If you want to be queued up for verbal comments, please enter your name in the live stream Q&A feature and indicate that you wish to make a verbal comment, but please do not include your written comment as this will avoid duplication. I will first call on these names in the order received. After hearing from those individuals listed in the Q&A, we will ask if there are any comments from individuals who are on the phone line but not utilizing the online Q&A feature. Please note that you can only make verbal comments by calling into the meeting. When it is your turn to speak, press star six on your phone to unmute. As a reminder, this public comment period is for commissioners to listen to comments and concerns and not to answer specific questions. When providing comment, please indicate your name and where you live if you are willing to share so that we have that for our records. And please limit comments to one per person and keep them brief, no longer than three minutes so we have a chance to hear from all who would like to comment. Ms. Cole, I think that you are again uh, assisting in this process. Are there any comments that have been added through the live stream Q&A feature? At this time, there are no comments in the live event Q&A feature. Is there anybody in the Q&A feature has indicated an interest in uh, providing a verbal comment? None at this time. Okay. We will now go uh, to those who are participating only by the phone option. Uh, if you would like to make a verbal comment at this time, you may do so. Uh, again, press star six on your phone to unmute. Is there anybody who would like to provide a verbal comment at this time? Good morning, can you hear me? Good morning, yes, we can. Good morning, my name is Jacqueline. I live in Zealand. I have Consumers Energy, um, and I have been actually trying to get something called a letter of release. Apparently to switch utilities, you need something called a letter of release, um, and it appears to be extremely difficult to get. So I did a FOIA request. Consumers Energy has only granted four residential releases in the past five years. That's my comment. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Jacqueline. Um, if you want to follow up more on this, uh, we do have a, a consumer information tab on our website, which is michigan.gov slash MPSC. You can also call our Customer Assistance Division at 800-292-9555, uh, and they uh, can help uh, with utility contacts and, and additional information and help in seeing this through. But appreciate you joining the, the meeting this morning. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to provide public comment at this time? Okay, well, we will close the, the public comment period. Um, I just have one announcement. I believe my colleagues also have some announcements, but uh, Nate Johnson is here with us today. Uh, he is with our Customer Assistance Division, and today is unfortunately his last day with the Commission. So I wanted, before we broke, to formally recognize Nate and thank him for his many contributions and certainly wish him the best in the next phase of his career. Thanks for everything you've done. Uh, Commissioner Phillips, I believe you have a couple of announcements this morning. I do, just uh, two brief announcements. One, uh, this week, Governor Whitmer and the MPSC joined states and agencies across the country in participating in Lifeline Awareness Week. This is an annual opportunity to inform and urge eligible households to take advantage of federal and state Lifeline programs. The Lifeline program, which is available through dozens of telecommunications providers in Michigan, provides eligible customers, including seniors, veterans, and low-income households with monthly discounts on telephone and broadband service. Currently, there are over 250,000 Michiganders who are subscribers in the Lifeline program. Telephone and broadband customers seeking additional questions about program eligibility, as well as uh, information on participating providers are encouraged to access the Lifeline consumers, uh, consumer tip sheet 
uh, which is on the MPSC website, and I believe we will also be posting in the comments of this commission meeting today as well. Uh, or you can contact the commission by phone at 1-800-292-9555. In addition to the Lifeline program, the Commission is also using this opportunity to again inform Michiganders of the opportunity uh, to um, uh, seek additional resources through the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program. The program provides between $50 and $75 uh, monthly discounts on broadband bills, as well as one-time $100 discounts towards laptops, desktop computers, our tablets purchased through eligible broadband providers. Uh, for this program, we have more than 195,000 households in Michigan that are receiving this assistance. For customers that are looking for additional information, we encourage them to go to the FCC's website at www.getemergencybroadband.org. And uh, there, uh, through that website, they can apply as well as find uh, participating providers near them. Lastly, the Commission wants to again provide customers with notice that the time is quickly approaching for telephone users in Michigan 616-810-906 and 989 area codes uh, to include an area code uh, with every phone call known as 10-digit dialing in preparation for the rollout of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. In just one month, beginning on October 24th, all phone customers with numbers in the affected Michigan area codes above must dial 10, 10 digits for all local calls. Important safety and security equipment, such as medical alert devices and alarm and security systems may still use seven digit dialing. And these systems must be programmed to use 10 digit dialing before October 24th. For those seeking additional information on this 10-digit uh, dialing conversion, you may vis visit the website of the North American Numbering uh, Plan Administration, our email uh, nampa at 988 at somos.com. Additionally, uh, I believe we have a consumer's tip sheet that is also available on the Commission website, and we will be posting that in the comments to this Commission meeting as well for customers to access. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Phillips. Commissioner Paratek? Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to note that the Commission is hosting a technical conference, as was described by uh, Ms. Simpson during her um, presentation today. Uh, the co technical conference is on emergency preparedness, distribu distribution reliability, and storm response. It's going to be held virtually on October 22nd, as was ordered during our August 25th commission meeting in order U-21122. This was originally planned as a single full-day in-person technical conference with a virtual option for the 22nd, but as guidance has changed since that order, we've adjusted to have the technical conference as virtual only. As a result, we'll be now hosting the conference over the course of two days uh, in an attempt to prevent fatigue. Um, day one of the virtual technical conference will still be held on October 22nd, and the date for the second day of the conference will be posted to the docket in case number U-21122 in the near future. Information on how to participate will also be made available in the same docket no later than October 4th. We expect this two-part conference to update and inform the commissioners, commission staff, and interested stakeholders on the current state of emergency preparedness, distribution reliability, and storm response, and discuss the scale and degree of improvements required, and explore ideas for how to achieve these improvements, all while maintaining a focus on environmental justice, equity, and cost. We encourage the public to join and look forward to the event. Thank you, Commissioner Paratek. I think that concludes today's meeting. Uh, the next regular commission meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 13th, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. And is there a motion to adjourn, Commissioner Phillips? Thank you, Chair. I motion to adjourn today's commission meeting. I second the motion. We will now have a vote on the motion to adjourn the meeting. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? This meet the motion carries by a unanimous vote and the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody.